giving us perfect access into your presence. For in your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures for forevermore. Father, give us a fresh word. Though we have been on this series, dear God, can a Christian have devils or can a Christian be possessed? We ask that you give us a fresh word on that topic. Give us a fresh word and help us to rise higher. Help us to soar where eagles soar. Where the eagles fly. For we belong to a higher altitude. Mm. Oh, glory to God Almighty.
is for a people. And every knee shall bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to do a quick review of what we have been through. Because I'm here today to pray. Amen. We spoke, I think it was about three, three Tuesdays ago. We took our text from Mark chapter 5. Where there was a man that was possessed. And he spent his time in the tombs. And while he was there, he was naked, and he was cut himself with stones. And this man was in a serious condition. People may have said there's no hope for him. People have gave up on him. As a matter of fact, they banish him from society. There's no hope, they say. But let me tell you something. As long as Jesus is here, there's hope. One encounter with the Lord Jesus can change your life forever. And here it is, we see that that man was there night and day in the tombs crying out. He was very fierce because people was afraid to him pass his way. He was so fierce that they bind him with chains and fetters. And he will pluck them asunder. Not in, not in his human strength. But because of the devil that has possessed him. He had supernatural strength to break chains and fetters. Hallelujah. And this man was destitute and needed help. And Jesus Christ was passing through that region with his, with his disciples. <laughs> and this man seen him a far ways off and ran and worshipped him oh my lord hmm. do you know no devils will worship Jesus every time we have an encounter with Jesus then we must see how much I'm here but this man in his humanity that I often say this that that man knew something about God. Amen. Sometime in his life, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Why would he just run no, no. and bow and worship him? Wow. He must have known something about God. Mm -hmm. And here it is. When he approached Jesus, he says, What have we to do with you, Jesus, thou Son of God? Are you come to torment us before time? I said last week and I say this week again. The demons know that there is a time in which they will be tormented. They know it too. They know that their destiny is the blink of fire for all eternity. They say, but Jesus it is not time yet for us to be tormented. Jesus says, what is your name? And uh, the devil answered, legion, because we are many. 
Bear with me. I'm teaching today. Now, further in that chapter, it says there was a man with an unclean spirit, which we discussed last week, which means it was singular. An unclean spirit. But yet still, when Jesus asked what's your name, they said legions, because we are many. Let me tell you something, people of God, if you have not yet known. It was a rule of darkness that has possessed this man. He was the strong man. Amen. And through him, many demons came in. When you deal with a ruler, you have many because, let me tell you something, the devil is very organized. Oh yeah. He has his general, his major, his lieutenant. Huh? He has rank and fight and order. And they're not divided. Are you with me, 
church. We're going somewhere today. Say 
said Michael. The archangel. Who knows that Michael's a prince? Amen. Who knows also that Satan is a prince? Amen. Two of them are powerful. Amen. Why do you think that when Bye. 
back up. Because he will know that this one is not ignorant of what he possesses. Oh, Jesus. No, but I'm just, stay with me, I'm just. You know, past the battle, Jesus wants to ask a question. He says, who do men say that I am? Some say you are Jeremiah or Elijah or John the Baptist or some other prophet. But he says, but who do you say that I the son of man? And Peter rises up boldly and says, I want the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus made a profound statement upon this rock. That's what I'm saying. We need revelation in the church today. Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And not only so, but I give unto you the key.
You know, I, I have something that I jot down here, but I can't say. Let me tell you something. We mentioned that Christians cannot be possessed. They could be oppressed. Believers could be harassed. They can be exact. They can be afflicted, tormented, frustrated, bewitched. They can, they can cast spell on you. They can tie you up. They can block you and hinder you. All these things. They can do. Let me tell you something. I don't want to die and go to heaven. And then God shows me a warehouse of all my goods. All my goods in heaven. And say, look, this is what I have prepared for you on earth. You died. Without walking in the fullness of God. Oh God, the devil has managed to rob you of your very health and strength. The devil dropped some of us of our children. Them say I can't catch quack on me, I'll catch them short. Some of your children are rebellious beyond measure. Because the devil realized that he cannot touch you. Too much fire in you. That's why it's very important that we continue to warfare on behalf of children Amen. on behalf of our church Amen. don't worry I soon pray here I soon pray I just want to do the finish one I'm almost done hallelujah hallelujah Wherever God has positioned you in your ju jurisdiction, He's positioned you there to deal with that devil over that 